Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of MC Commute. You know the deal. We're gonna be riding to the Motorcyclist Magazine office in Southern California on Triumph's all new 2019 Scrambler 1200 XE. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here we go. Triumph's 2019 Scrambler 1200 XE. This is an all new motorcycle from Triumph Motorcycles out of Hinkley, England. And this replaces their old 2007 to 2016 generation Scrambler. So all new from the wheels up. Actually, even the wheels are new. Everything's new. Love the iconic styling of this motorcycle. You can see a lot of that TR6C 1960s Triumph history in this bike. It's just a really iconic looking motorcycle. Love the, the shotgun style pipes that sweep around from the front of the engine to the rear. Love the headlight, the signature Triumph tank, the big flat seat, very nice looking bike. Those spoked wheels too, like those things are the real deal. 21 inch front, 17 inch rear. Yeah, uh, you've got some real off-road chops on this thing. You guys might be wondering why this bike is so dirty. Uh, we just got back from filming episode two of On Two Wheels down in Baja, Mexico. So that's the reason why the bike is so dirty. I'm under strict orders not to wash it. It pains me very greatly to ride a motorcycle this dirty, but we can't wash it, so that's why it's so dirty. So this is genuine certified Baja, Mexico dirt. We did not fake the funk making this. Let's go for a ride. All right, guys, this motorcycle is equipped with keyless ignition. You do not need a key to start this motorcycle. You just need to have the electronic fob in close proximity to the machine to be able to start it. So no key. What do you guys think of it? How does it sound? All right, guys, let's go. Let's go ride. Now, before we ride, I forgot, let's put it in our preferred electronic mode. Every time you restart, restart this engine, it defaults to, to uh, certain traction control and engine map setting. I've made a custom map. So I've made a custom map with this off-road pro mode. Off-road pro custom. This mode has ABS off, traction control off, and power map in the road setting. So there's four actually power settings on this motorcycle. Off-road, rain, road, and sport. And I like the road map overall. That's my favorite map for riding on the street, riding in the dirt, going off jumps, whatever. Road map is the best for me, so that's why we're running it. We also turned off TC and ABS because we don't need that stuff on our way to work today. But for the guys and girls who do want TC and ABS, you can certainly use it. And it, the system works very well on this Tri-1200 Scrambler. Very, very well. But we're not going to use it. Because Steve McQueen and Bud Ekins wouldn't use it, so we're not going to either. Sorry, guys. Another quick detour. They're having some construction here in the neighborhood, so we're veering off the route a little bit, slightly. So I hope you guys aren't too upset about that. So we've got our custom off-road pro map on, and we're riding dirty. Very dirty. Right away, this Scrambler 1200 XE is quite the motorcycle. Now the XE varies from the XC in its more robust suspension and slightly extended swing arm. Now Triumph did these modifications to make the Scrambler 1200 more off-road worthy. The XC still can be ridden off-road, which we did, and it certainly gets some, but the XC takes things to another level. It's got almost two inches more suspension travel front and rear, nearly 10 inches. Can you believe that? A street bike with 10 inches of suspension travel? That's what this thing is. So it has two inches more suspension travel than the XC, and the fork, the diameter of the Showa fork is bigger. And that's just going to give you extra rigidity when you're jumping stuff and, and, and hitting obstacles at speed. We just got done riding this thing in Baja for a couple days and, you know, the suspension on this bike is no joke. Like, it, it can handle some serious chop. A very, very well-engineered bike. 
for street riding, you'd be amazed at how well a motorcycle with 10 inches of suspension and a 20 inch, 21 inch front wheel performs on the road. It handles very, very well. But if you're riding on the street, you want the XC model. It sits a little bit lower, it hugs the ground a little bit better, and it's a little bit more apt for high performance street riding. Conversely, if you're going to be mobbing off-road, you want this Long Travel XE. Clutch pull on this bike is very well sorted. It's got a very nice clutch. Lever pull isn't too stout and it's very responsive. Six-speed transmission in this bike works very well too doesn't have auto blip downshifter, doesn't have electronic quick shifter, which would both be nice features on this bike. I love those two things, especially when they're combined together. But the transmission meshes between all the gears very nice, very positive feel. I like it a lot. Ergonomics on this bike are very, very, it's a very comfortable bike. Triumph motorcycles always have very well thought out ergonomics and very, very comfortable seats. Well, most of them anyways. And this bike does not disappoint. This motorcycle is a bike that you can literally ride for 12 hours a day, day after day after day, and have no discomfort. Like, I'm talking no discomfort. Very comfortable seat, very well supported. Handlebar is nice and high. It's got a little bit of a rearward sweep. If you're riding off-road a lot, I could understand how you could maybe want the bar maybe moved a little bit forward, but for all-around purposes, this thing works really good for me. Ooh, that power, do you feel that power? That's 1,200 cc's of Hinkley-made parallel twin power. This engine's about 38% larger than the previous Scrambler. It has a lot more power. We have upwards of 60 foot pound of torque coming out of this engine from just over 2,000 RPM. So over 60 foot pound of torque from just over 2,000 RPM. It's got a very, very wide and flat power band. On our dyno, this thing made 75.5 horsepower. 75.5 peak horsepower. So this thing is no slouch. Jumps off the line really well. The calibration of the fuel injection and the throttle response is just magnificent. Triumph always does such a marvelous job with that. When we were riding off-road, you know, on the slick stuff, the mapping could use a little bit of work. You can tell that the, the fuel injection map's a little bit lean, you know, at low RPM initial throttle response, but or throttle opening, but nothing that you can't fix with a with a map. But still, out of the box, this thing runs very, very well. As we mentioned before, there's four adjustable combined engine and throttle maps. Off-road, rain, road, and sport. I prefer road, but if you guys want a little bit more jump, a little bit more pep in your step, you might like the sport mode. Off-road mode's really nice too. It smoothens out the power for riding the slick stuff, but at the same time, I like the, the, the extra going of the road map. It just kind of barks off the corner a little bit, allows you to spin the tire a little bit more easily. I like that. Makes, makes this bike feel like a 450 motocross or off-road bike off-road when you have the road map on. I like that. We're rolling on, rolling on Pirelli Scorpion off-road tires. These tires are made for riding on and off-road, and God, they are really, really good tires. You wouldn't believe a tire with, with semi-knobs like this thing has would work on pavement so well, but they do. They really do a great job of gripping the pavement. Oh God, a red light, we gotta stop, guys. Brakes on this bike are just unbelievable. This thing has Brembo M50 Superbike radio mount calipers on it there's actually literally sport bike style like high-end sport bike style braking calipers two of them on this bike they pinch big 320 millimeter rotors 
but the wheel is so big it makes the rotors actually look kind of tiny just funny also a really nice feature in the braking department is this is this Brembo MCS master cylinder so not only is this master cylinder radial mount so it's got a lot of abilities to push fluid but <laughs> the the leverage ratio is actually adjustable you can actually adjust the leverage ratio of the master cylinder so what that means is there's a 19 20 and 21 setting and that alters basically the feel of the master cylinder so right now we have it in the lowest setting 19 and what that does is is it pushes less fluid which makes the brake a little bit less sensitive when you touch it I do that because a lot of times we're riding this bike off-road and I don't want to have the, the bike already by itself is naturally sensitive for God's sakes it's got super bike brakes on it so just naturally it, the brakes gonna be very sensitive so I try to dull it a little bit just because most of the time we're riding in, in traction limited surfaces but if you were riding strictly on them you want the utmost and feel you just want to barely even touch the brake lever and have the brakes engage then you want that highest 21 setting but just amazing that Triumph has engineered that kind of feature into into its motorcycle I mean that's a cool feature that sport bikes should have and sport bikes don't have that so good on Triumph not only did they did they put that feature on the bike but they engineered it to perfection so the calibration of the braking system is just phenomenal I can't believe a, a motorcycle that you can ride off-road the brakes work so good I mean it's just unbelievable good job Triumph you guys killed it off-road ABS allows the front wheel to have ABS but the rear wheel isn't so you can slide the rear tire Love the sound of this parallel. Whoa, look at that wheelie. Just wants to rip. Oh God, we're speeding. We'll slow down, guys. 50 miles per hour. That's the thing with this bike. This 1200cc engine, it's just got so much grunt that like you just accelerate and all of a sudden you're going 60 miles per hour. It just, it just, it has turbo diesel-like tr torque coming off the line. Really like this engine. Sounds cool, it's smooth. There's a little bit of vibration, but not a whole lot of it just a hint of it but it's it's again it's the pleasing kind of vibration it's the kind of vibration that lets you know you're riding a awesome motorcycle I wouldn't even need to put pipes on this bike because it sounds so good just right out of the box you can hear the snarl of the exhaust while you're riding but it's not so loud where it's gonna offend passerbys but they're gonna hear you they're gonna be like oh my god look at that guy on that Triumph motorcycle it sounds sick but it's not gonna annoy the the tree huggers I wouldn't think at least obviously a bike with 10 inches of suspension travel it's gonna float over the road really well and it does you really don't feel many bumps on this bike at all it just sucks them all up the calibration of the suspension is a little bit more aggressive I guess you could say like this bikes a little bit stiffly sprung you can really haul some butt on it you gotta remember this bikes you know just over 450 pounds so it's not the lightest bike out there so it's good that it's got some some I'm not gonna say stiff but more robust suspension calibration full adjustment front and rear which is nice this thing's got Olean's a pair of Olean's Olean shock absorbers on the back another cool features about this bike is cruise control heated grips which all come standard on the XC model on the XC I think heated grips is a is a small upcharge the navigation of the menu system is just it works really good I love this color T TFT display it's very pretty very easy to use you can scroll through various functions here with the switch button here with your range and MPG speaking of which we've been averaging 38.1 miles to a gallon and that's with considerable off-road use 38.1 miles to a gallon this thing has a 4.2 gallon fuel tank it's not the biggest fuel tank realistically I wish it had a little bit more 
fuel payload because this bike's going to take you to some crazy places. I was talking to some friends the other day and they're like, what do you think of the Scrambler 1200? Honestly, if there was one, like only one motorcycle you could have in your garage, one motorcycle that you were going to, you know, ride around town, ride to work, look cool on, blast off-road on, take a chick for you with a ride, you know, ride in the corners, have fun on the weekend, the Scrambler 1200 would be a very, very, very good option. The only thing this bike really can't do is it can't, you know, be raced at the track. You can't really do a track day on it. I mean, you could do a track day on it. It'd probably work pretty well, but it really wouldn't be in its element. But in every other situation, it's in its element. Finally, a corner, guys. I'm gonna accelerate and break the speeding law. I hope you guys don't mind just because this corner is so awesome. Whoa. Kind of came in a little hot, guys. Let's turn cruise control on. All right, we got cruise control on 68 miles per hour. No surging, no jumping, just pure 68 mile perfection of speed. I like it. These hand guards right here, which are standard on the XC, these do a marvelous job of deflecting wind around your hands. They actually keep your, your hands a little bit warmer than if you didn't have it. They're also nice when you're riding in the rain and stuff like that. While we were in Baja, I took a small tip over. I hit a big rock and took a small tip over. Nothing big, but it kind of moved this hand guard out of the way. But it's nice that you have these hand guards. They actually protect the controls a little bit. So despite taking that little tip over, everything's straight and perfect. This thing's a little bit bashed up minorly, but not bad. You just loosen this thing and readjust it and you're good to go. So a nice feature. Talked about how awesome the front brake is on this bike, but the rear brake's pretty great too. You actually have a twin piston. It's a big old Brembo caliper on there, which is good because you're riding off-road, you want you want the ability to be able to, to use the rear brake. And you want a sensitive rear brake because when you're riding off-road, you don't have the traction of pavement. So you're gonna be using a lot more back brake to control the bike and control its stability. Then this rear brake works really well. The brake pedal, rear brake pedal actually has some adjustment. You can move it around. The foot pegs on this bike and the brake pedal are serrated. So they actually have some serious grip to them, which is great. That's what you want in an off-road bike. They made up to the bottom of your shoe or boot really well and allow you to have some serious traction and control on the bike. You can also remove the rubber foot peg inserts if you're really riding in the slick stuff. Another really nice touch by Triumph. Always amazed at how well this 21 inch front wheel equipped bike handles. Bikes with that big of a front inch front tire shouldn't handle as good on the pavement, but it does. A lot of people might be wondering, why a 21 inch front, front wheel? Well, 21 inch front wheels are the same size as a dirt bike front, front wheel. And that allows it to just roll over obstacles more easily. Rolling over rocks, rolling over steep terrain, just makes it more adept in those conditions. 17 inch rear wheel is kind of interesting. Obviously that's a road bias setup. I really would have liked to have seen Triumph in an 18-inch rear wheel. That gives you access to a little bit more aggressive tires, and it kind of, in my experience, it helps it off-road a little bit. Not saying that the 17-inch wheel doesn't do well off-road, but I think an 18-inch would do better. And realistically, nowadays, all the all the big tire manufacturers they offer really sporty rubber in 18-inch wheel fitment. And of course they offer good off-road tire fitment in that size too because it's an off-road wheel size. So that's my only gripe. My only other gripe on this bike is that it would have been nice if it came fitted with a steering stabilizer. So when you're riding on the road, you're never going to miss it. When you're riding off-road, most of the time you're not going to miss it. But if you hurt hit certain sections of terrain with stutter bumps, this thing can get a little bit flighty. I think it has something to do with the valving of the fork, but I'm not completely sure, but I think it is. But if you put a steering stabilizer on that, that would really remedy the situation. Those are my only two gripes. 
This bike's a really nice bike. All right, guys, we're almost to the Motorcyclist Magazine office in Southern California. How excited are you guys? Can't wait to get to work and write all the nice stories for everyone. So would I buy this Triumph Scrambler XE? $15,400 for this thing, $1,400 more than the XC. Personally, I would buy the XC. I would save $1,400 and buy that. Why? Because I'm gonna be riding this motorcycle more on the road than off-road, because that's how motorcycles go for me. I use them as tools to get around. So I'm gonna be riding more on the road, and since I'm gonna be riding more on the road, the XC is a better road bike. But still, the XC can be ridden off-road. At the official Triumph Press introduction in Portugal, we rode the, the XC off-road and it did just fine. I'd go off jumps and ride the hell out of that thing off-road, so it'd be fine. Yes, it wouldn't be quite as capable as this XC, but it would be good enough for me. So I would buy the XC. I would absolutely, totally spend $14,000 on that bike. It is awesome. All right, guys, the wheelie test. Are you guys ready? Ooh, I think it's gonna back in good too. All right, guys, let's do the wheelie test. Yeah, she wheelies great, guys. Look how good it wheelies. Yeah, wheelies good. Good job, Trump. All right, back her in test. Oh yeah, she backs in good too. Real good. Good job, Trump. 10 out of 10 on the wheelie test, 10 out of 10 on the back it in test. Not bad for a bike with semi off-road tires. Pretty BA if you ask me. That sounds so cool, I love this bike. All right guys, we're coming to the favorite part, actually my third favorite part, my wheelie, the wheelie part and back it in parts, my first and second respectively. But my third favorite part of this ride where I get to answer your guys' questions from Instagram, Motorcyclist Online Instagram page. One more little bugaboo I forgot to mention too about this bike. So we got the steering stabilizer and 17 inch rear wheel. The electronics. Sometimes the display will be like key fob out of range or this and that. And occasionally you try to start the motorcycle and for whatever reason it won't start and then it will start. So Triumph, you guys got to figure that out a little bit better. The, the starting mechanism and the key fob procedure, get that dialed in. I don't know if it needs a firmware update or what, but that should be a little bit more sorted. So those are my only complaints. The King 1N The North asks, is it awesome or is it the most awesome? Well, that's a good question. I would say it is the most awesome. There is no better scrambler bike out there than this scrambler 1200 xe it's top of the class so yeah it is it is the most awesome that rc 200 guy asks how much better is it than the scrambler 900 and it is a proper off-road bike well it's significantly better than the scrambler 900 the scrambler 900 was a great bike a really marvelous street bike comfortable sounded cool but it didn't really work off-road like an off-road bike should this thing does yes you can rip this thing off-road you can go off double jumps and and go crazy you could definitely go to the motocross track track on this bike and rip it we did we actually did ride this thing off-road and went off jumps on it at the official triumph press introduction in portugal speaking of which if you guys want to read about that hop on to motorcyclistonline.com search scrambler 1200 first ride you will see the written review from that there's also a video so please click that look at it leave a comment let us know what you think so yes this bike is better than 900 and it's a proper off-road bike for real nifty 250 does the seat height width and weight of the bike make it uncomfortable in stop and go traffic i don't think so you know this bike is a sizable motorcycle but it's not huge but it definitely is a little bit big I don't find it that hard to manipulate through traffic, but the handlebar is a little bit wide, so it's a little bit wide. The seat height's really tall, so if you're a shorter guy or a smaller guy, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a handful cutting through traffic, but I don't feel it's a problem for me. But if you're a smaller guy, yes, it will be a little bit of a handful. Is it worth 15 freaking 
thousand dollars ask Nate easy underscore well I think it is I mean it does everything it, it's like we'd mentioned earlier in the ride it's the bike that literally does everything the only thing you probably couldn't do well you could do it you could do a track day on it but that's the only situation where it wouldn't be in its element is like doing a track day on it so for 15 grand I would buy this bike. I'd actually buy the XC. We talked about that. But yes, it's definitely worth it. V Volts. This one or a Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. Uh, it's not even close for me. I would buy this bike. Easy decision. Can you really off road it? And will a video follow? Hi, Pepe. Yes, you can off road the hell out of it. You can go off double jumps on this thing and jump dirt bike motocross jumps on this thing and send it. Yeah, it's badass. I love this bike. You know, if you gave it to, you know, Vicky Golden or something, she'd probably be able to whip this bike. I'm not joking. Like, that's how good it does off-road. Yes, there'll be a video on it. You're watching the video right now. Motorcyclist Mag on YouTube. All right, guys, let's do one more. Let's do one more question. Which one should we do? Oh, yeah. Felix, GLGL, is it easy to burn your leg on the exhaust? As long as the header cover and the muffler cover stays on, you're not going to burn your your leg on the exhaust but if those things fall out yes you will burn your leg on the exhaust 1000 percent so make sure those those fasteners are in there tight and maybe put some loctite on them for sure um so you don't burn your leg you don't want to do that all right guys that's that's a wrap from the instagram question section via motorcyclist online make sure to follow our instagram page we are verified, so you know we're legit. So follow us on Instagram. And pay attention to the future posts where we, where we mention the next bike we do MC Commutes on. All right, guys, let's wrap this thing up. 2019 Scrambler 1200 XC. I love this bike. I would not buy it. I would buy the XC, the $1,400 less expensive bike, because that bike's more roadworthy than this bike. Um, but if you're looking for the ultimate performance off-road, geez louise, this bike is awesome. I really like it. Triumph, good job. Good job, Triumph. You guys did a great job with this bike. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's a wrap from this episode of MC Commute. Make sure to subscribe to our channel here at Motorcyclist Mag on YouTube if you like what you see. And hop on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com for all of your digital content needs. We've got stories We've got features, interviews, photos, all kinds of stuff. So hop on there. We post a new piece of content on that website every day except for Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're going to see some new content there. So make sure to hop on there and give us a just take a look at it. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.